barbell lies on the floor. The color has worn off its weight plates. It's 60 kilograms. Your triceps hum at the sight of these weights. Show the world what kind of beast it's dealing with. Lift them. There are no collars on the barbell. This is a safety hazard. Why does it feel so familiar? No, it's not that. It's the stale smell of rubber. The squeaky sound of sneakers. Your bruised knee against the mat. And a whistle. Then the feeling is gone. It's just a memory. A memory from another life. When you were young and fit. You're right. The weight may fall off. Better not touch it then. It would be a violation of EPIS safety regulations if the gym was still operating, but it isn't. No one's supposed to come here anymore. You've managed to hoist it off the ground, but the barbell feels wobbly and dangerous. Your hands slip with sweat. Turns out you're no beast, just an old man with bad form. See? See? This place is cursed. Weightlifting was never my favorite either. At the station gym, I mean. I prefer running. It clears your head. Iron safety curtain curves before your eyes, folded like a bellows. It covers half the room, blocking the way into a colossal industrial chimney. This must be where the entity lives. What an odd thing to do. Nothing happens. Still nothing. No one's home. Those curtains prove to be surprisingly sturdy. Your fist hurts now. If this is really an entrance to the chimney, then there must be a furnace somewhere as well. Maybe there's another way to get in. Can you please try to refrain from attacking random things? <sighs> Ghosts aren't real. Didn't your parents tell you that? In any case, there's no way we can get in right now. Let's investigate further. flashlight slides over an old green chalkboard covered in scribbles, sketches, and schemes like some ancient cave mural. Some of the writing has faded with age, but you can still make out sections here and there. Photos and drawings have been pinned to the board. These lithe, pointy-eared creatures appear to be different types of welkins, 
you make out autumnal candle welkins casting wax-based magic. Translucent welkins with organs shining under their skin, and even ether welkins hailing from the vast emptiness of sidereal space. Who are all those creatures? Fantasies of a tortured, feverish mind? One of the Welkins, towering among the rest, appears to be different, however. It's Vara Hamira, a high Welkin, his face white and scarred like cracked marble. This is clearly a Welkin supremacist. The note says, all non-Welkin races will be purged. The Haldor, the Tworg, the humans, and even headless men, all of them purged. Imagine a world filled only with Welkin, Green Welkin, Dread Welkin, and the High Welkin to rule them all. An inordinate amount of time has gone into drawing these little Welkin creatures. Some people really like building a world, I think, even if it's just for a game. This looks like concept art for a project. It's not really real. Mm -hmm. Political commentary. That one has a great beard too. Just look at those details. So much effort. The photo collage depicts barren icy landscapes wrapped in perpetual night. You see permafrost and glacial landforms, dead trees grown in under the snow. Entire oceans have been frozen from shore to shore. There are pictures of settlements on dried up riverbeds, abandoned in a storm. Animal corpses in the dark, carcasses and bones. You see primitive oil rigs built into glaciers, boreal dvorg, yurts under the snow, great mammoth-like beasts of burden. Albeit dark and cold, this vision also feels cozy in its own way, like eggnog or morphine, a much-needed respite from our own world. A pinned postcard reads, The heat death scenario, a desperate fight for geothermal energy engulfs the world as Wirral becomes untethered from its sun, drifting through the universe. This is a monthly calendar from the year 50. Cryptic words like Sprint, Daily Minimi, and GPI span the marker-drawn grid the grand scheme of production and money. It looks a bit like an academic calendar, only much more brutal. Minimi stands for a mini-meeting. It's part of a bigger framework for managing work called RUN. Station 41 tried to implement it a few years ago, but failed. As time goes on, the numbers in the boxes grow rarer and rarer. The board becomes an empty snowfield in the final days. Only failure and regret dwell in this region. Looks like they didn't make it. A note in the bottom left corner of the chalkboard says, see the prod schedule filament for details. The handwriting is only partly legible, but you can still make out three slogans, call in, tune out, we're all untethered, and Heat death of the universe. The full text reads, Heat death of the universe is the new black. Another note says, The biggest advancement in role-playing systems since the 30s. Outside, a cold wind wraps the building in its bosom. Snowflakes in the wind. An old woman passes what the locals call the doomed commercial area. She tries hard not to look at the bookstore windows. It's unwise. This appears to be some kind of machine with a cube-shaped heart and a wired framework. The keyboard has a rectangular on-off button. A piece of paper still hangs from the printer. A radio computer. Just sitting here without anyone inside. This is the Ream Civic radio computer. Model RC5120, equipped with a Feld mainframe and a ream compatible printer. We have one of these down at the station, but I never really learned how to use it. The machine lights up like some prehistoric animal stirring from its slumber, revealing 
fluorescent play and print keys on the keyboard. The hatch on the machine's central compartment is wide open. It's empty like a beehive without its brood. Some cables have been left dangling, disconnected. The filament you have would fit perfectly inside the compartment. Like a smooth drawer, the filament slides into place. On the keyboard, the play key starts blinking. A bar of fabric right above the keyboard starts producing a soft hum. The sound of static seeps through the machine's planar magnetic driver. Have you stirred the ghost of the doomed commercial area from its rest? Could this be its dismembered heart beginning to flutter? The static gets louder, slowly filling up the abandoned hall, until a voice speaks out, crackling and old, cutting into the air. Good morning, Circus Accident en rue de Saint-Gazelaine. This is East Insulindian Repeater Station 1. Please repeat. Is this the production schedule? The filament you have inserted into the reader. Yes. Is that the production schedule? Good. Please repeat the password. Password? Of course it would have a password. That's why there's a human administrator involved. No. A hint system is not part of the protocol for repeater stations. Still no. I am contractually obliged to protect the privacy of the filament holder for trust accident. Without filing a warrant with Lintel, I cannot give you access to this filament. I'm afraid we are not doing that, unless we want to wait for a month. Now, can you please repeat the password? Received. I will register this login attempt. Don't worry. Passwords have a way of turning up sooner or later. Fortress accident. Is there anything else I can do for you today? Fortress accident is the company on whose name the terminal you are currently using has been registered to. One moment. Fortress Accident SCA produces revolutionary interactive call-in radio games. That's what the catalog says. That's not bad. Hmm. Any other questions? Yes, I am alive. I am 74 years old and my name is Yvonne. She repeats passwords. Programming people are all paranoid. They are merely cautious. It's my job to protect their filaments as a password repeater at the East Insulindian Station. I work as a repeater at the East Insulindian Repeater Station. It's my job to know where you are for this accident. As for me, well, I am sitting in my cubicle, surrounded by a wall of radios. On an island on the River Esperance, a small woman, all skin and bones, sits in a room filled with audio equipment. Thousands of tiny lights are reflected back from her prescription lenses, like stars in the dark. Now, please tell me if there's anything else I can do for this accident. Thank you, and goodbye. Tiles on the cube are still smoldering, casting the framework in a soft glow. Fluorescent play and print keys shine on the keyboard. Nothing happens. The filament slides out of its glowing nest. <laughs> this old fireplace is covered in lines drawn in blue and red marker. The mesh spreading over the stone like blood vessels on alabaster skin. It looks ghostly and strangely ancient. 
The whole thing resembles Cadran mosaic tiles. Very pathetic. History classes, students with their textbooks open, studying the roots of our civilization. Those aquarelle blue tiles looked beautiful in the sun. Radio frequencies, it seems. UKV 123.6, UKV 123.7, UKV 123.9. Some written notes, too. Sparse and cryptic. Unclear. It looks like a cardiovascular system split into veins and capillaries. Very advanced. You think so? The web is comprised of radio stations, all lead back to one red heart, titled The Game Master Frequency. A note says this one can listen in on any station it wants. They must have had massive air width. These things don't come cheap. Someone very important. The leader of a massive on-air game built by these people. A conductor for the hundreds of story threads that pass through the Game Master's frequency. Whoever decides to call in to a call-in station, it looks like. A list of names under the stations suggests people across six Isolas would be playing Muindi, Insulinda, Kotla, Grad, Samara, and even Il Mara. There's no way a little basement studio working here could pull anything like this off. My god. It's as if the less money they had, the more ambitious their project became. Exactly. This schedule, I know doom when I see it. The company was running out of funding. Nothing. It's just lines on marble. An echo from times long gone. No one has used the fireplace in ages. Okay, what do you think is going on with that computer, chalkboard and fireplace? No, that's not it. I think... Like he's ready to lay out a fine theory, crafted together like a puzzle box. It looks like one of those popular pen and paper role-playing games. Only these people were trying to automate it, make it work on radio computers. Utter madness, he thinks, as a compliment. Through call-in stations, none of the players have to be physically present. Anyone in the world can participate in the game, as long as they have a two-way radio. Then there's the Game Master frequency that listens in on the smaller call-in stations. I think that was supposed to coordinate the stories, functioning as a master of ceremonies of sorts. His fascination has swept aside other concerns for the moment. He's a little hooked. Coordinating so many games would take a whole switchboard of people, possibly divided into sub-frequencies. Not to my knowledge. They make automated games in Grad, Messina, Konigstein. You know, places with industry. But I don't think anyone has attempted to create an inter game before. We just don't have the technology. Indeed, those Welkins are a dead giveaway. Role-playing people love that stuff. The world looks like a modified version of the Wii World board game, with heat death thrown in. Super cool. Someone should give them millions of real immediately. This game is too good to be left unfinished. No idea. They stopped filling out the schedule on the chalkboard. Indeed, it's ambitious and untethered from reality, but... It's too late for that, I'm afraid. Okay, let's keep moving.
the beer's eyes are still glowing red. It's guarding over the freezing corpse hidden inside its belly. You pocket the note and the little fridge magnets keeping it on the door. Good question. It looks like an ice cream fridge. I know. What an unfortunate marketing choice. What is even worse, the bear is still costing them money to this day. The electricity bill must be catastrophic. On the other hand, it did help us with a certain corpse situation. Lucky us. Indeed. Refrigerated meat is much better for coroner's work. The note is written with a blue pencil on a piece of lined office paper. The kitchen magnets have left spots on its surface. Does it say anything interesting? This is tangential at best, but the lieutenant's detective instinct is still active. Someone has scribbled, S, I can't believe the off-site copy is still here. The illiterate ginger kid keeps stealing stuff from the studio, so I had to hide it somewhere safe. You'll find the filament memory with the off-site copy in the frozen ice cream maker. Please take it home, ASAP. It's important. I'd do it myself if I lived in a civilized place with a freezer. Take care, Suliswaf. Looks like someone from that radio game company upstairs. I'm a little surprised they just left their property lying here. That's a plausible hypothesis. It belongs inside a radio computer, storing its memory. It's like a tape. You listen to disco tapes, right? It's like one of your disco tapes, only for a computer. It's like the production schedule you found. Only this one's an off-site copy. Really? You don't have a single guess? Oh, I'm sure that child would love to get his hands on the filament memory. Even if he doesn't know what to do with it, he'd probably try to pawn it for speed, based on our encounter. I don't know. I assume it's somewhere close to the Ice Bear Fridge. A few bricks have fallen off, revealing a... to the breaker box. The red one leads to the ice bear fridge and the black one to the ice cream maker nearby. Something close to you dies with a soft electric purr. Why did you do that? The lieutenant raises his brows but doesn't say anything. The electric distribution board now has one cable missing. This orange machine is dead still. It has a hand-cranked ice cream churner and an electric freezer. The ice around it slowly melting. Turning the crank feels oddly satisfying, like stirring your childhood dreams. In the distance, you hear water dripping. It's all gone now. You'll never become a poet or an entrepreneur. What better to assuage the creeping sense of failure than some frozen fat and sugar? You slip your fingers under the frozen lid, but the ice is too cold for you to get a good grip. A pry bar would come in handy here. No, this is going to need something else, some kind of super pry bar. Don't even try to open it with a regular pry bar. 
you're just wasting your time. If you want to try again, then you need to have the pry bar in your hand, detective. Equip the pry bar by going to the tools tab in your inventory. From there, you can equip it to a held slot. This orange machine is dead still. It has a hand-cranked ice cream churner and the ice squeaks beneath the pry bar. You think you've got the bar jammed in there pretty well, but the lid simply won't budge. You see the pry bar's metal handle bending right before your very eyes. Yeah, well, that's a good pry bar. I'm not criticizing it, but this ice cream maker is frozen shut. It takes an advanced tool to get it open. I have no idea, officer. This ice cream maker isn't important enough to requisition a special tool. Sooner or later, you will stumble upon a tool mighty enough. Then we will know what's in this mysterious ice cream maker. layer of coal dust covers the furnace, coloring it pitch black. Looks like this furnace has a face, and it's a face of agony. Looks like it. Looks like an old central furnace used to heat the building. It's connected to the chimney. No one has used it in ages. No signs of any recent fire. Only dead rats. It's dark and grimy here. In the darkness you can hear, chatter, is coming from above. A voice, or several voices, talking to each other. Near the smoke chamber, upstairs. The echo is so prominent, it's impossible to discern what the voices are saying, or what's producing them. What are you doing? Wait, really? Take your head out of the chimney, please. It's not safe. It feels safe to know that the lieutenant's got your back, now and always. A lush layer of coal now covers your skin, sinking into the wrinkles. Your hands look ancient. You feel the spirit of Ramut Karzai, ancient hero of Grad, pulsing through you. All that's left is to cover your face in war paint. Three dangerous stripes appear onto your cheeks, telling stories of your wild soul. What... what are you doing? Please wipe your face clean, officer. No, you're a proud warrior. Keep it. You can feel your cheeks turn red under the lieutenant's gaze. You look like a kid, not a police officer. Even the war paint can't conceal the embarrassment. Thank you. So, where were we? You're right. The rooms do look like they're connected. But malignant entities don't exist. At least not the supernatural kind. You muster all your strength and yell. Your dehydrated, hungover throat can produce little more than a dry croak. A lifetime of smoking and drinking will do that to you. The chatter from the chimney continues on as before. You seem to have made no impression on whatever's up there. Then again, maybe it's worth actually trying something up there. Hmm. Maybe you should let your voice rest, officer. Try again later. A thick layer of coal dust covers the furnace. Co Something breaks loose in you. A mighty bellow echoes throughout the chimney's depths. The chatter of tiny voices above suddenly cease. Then... Hello? You've awakened the entity. Hello? Did you say anything? I can't hear you. Please come back. 
come up there. They're the same you got on the second floor. I'll open it. You hear a low rumble upstairs. The sound of a curtain being pulled aside. After you, officer. Hello, I'm Nia. Did you try knocking on my window? I must have missed you. I've been listening to my Milius. So what kind of die are you looking for? Could this be the malicious entity? Perhaps it's wise to go along with this masquerade for now. She's got a direct view to the backyard. You should interrogate her about the lynching. Yes, Amelia is like a call-in station. You need a two-way radio to access one. That's why I have these. Mostly, they just teach you to swear in different languages. But some of the stations can be quite interesting. I was so absorbed, I must have missed you knocking. Then how did you get inside? By the south entrance? You know what? It doesn't even matter. What matters is that you're finally here. Let's talk dice. Did you have something specific in mind? I'm a novelty dice maker. Tell me the name of your role-playing system and I'll make the die you need. That's why you're here, yes? As she speaks, her bone-like fingers fiddle with a ring. Her bones light but her hands strong. Role-playing games? You know the one made by Fortress Accident. Does that count? Answers? How strange. These days people only come to me for dice and role-playing games. I'm not sure how helpful I'll be, but go ahead and ask. It almost looks as if the stones and dice are a natural part of the room, growing out of the shells like stalagmites. How did I become one? It was a business decision. I was a regular jeweler at first, but that's an unfocused field, with too much competition. Some of my friends were role players. They asked me to make some polyhedral dice out of cobalt. That was my first order. I grew it from there. Not especially. I like working with rare materials and a steady pay. And role players as customers? They're nice people. Nothing really. I didn't know him. Who cares about the dead body? We might be dealing with a malignant entity here. The lieutenant looks at his notebook, then the woman under the large window. Your window looks directly onto the courtyard. You're saying you didn't see or hear anything unusual last Sunday evening? I'm sorry, detective, but as you know, I usually have my headphones on when I'm working. It shuts out most of the daily ruckus behind my window. Well, there's always something going on in the whirling's backyard. 
During daytime, there are usually those kids. And lately, I've been seeing a lot of drunk workers hanging about. Must be because of the strike. But I never saw anyone during that fateful Sunday night, I'm afraid. I might have, but in this case, all I would have seen is my own reflection staring back from the darkness. It's really hard to make anything out in the yard when it's dark outside. Besides, I rarely get up to look out the window when I'm in the zone. It's an odd profession, making dice for people, but I like it, and I prefer doing this to sitting at home. She nods. Anything else, officer? We're inside the chimney of an old central furnace. It's strange, I know. But when I arrived here, all the other rooms were taken, so I had to build myself a makeshift home. Besides, I don't really have to pay any rent here, so that's a plus. Plaisance was right. There's an entity living in the chimney. You should ask her about the curse. Create here. I've heard the stories, but I don't think those stories are true. Play sounds, the bookshop lady? I've heard that her business is doing rather well. Have the energy spared her somehow? All right, but it's not just the bookstore that's still up and running. What about the whirling in racks? Some people say it's part of the building complex. You could say so. Both houses were built at the same time and under the east of the Commerce Central project. And then there is me. <sighs> I've been here for 14 years, selling novelty dice to role-playing enthusiasts. Not exactly a million real business idea, Yet somehow, I've survived despite the talk of malicious energies. Strange, isn't it? Malignant entity? What does that even mean? <laughs> Some kind of sorceress? What about you, officer? Do you think I'm the malignant entity? Time has come to face the source. Fear not, for the forces of the universe are supporting you in this psychic quest. <laughs> so I'm the Grand Dragon in the cave. Might I ask what supports this claim? Oh my, I've revealed myself. You better call the exorcists. Of course, how convenient. Well, if you ever find a way to explain all those inconsistencies in the curse, then let me know. Plaisance needs to hear about this. Perhaps if you combine your psychic energies, you will make sense of the situation. More or less, are you interested in anyone specific? Oh, quite a lot of them spring to mind. Yes, I think it was called Androgynous Orlando or something similar. They weren't a big hit around here. Turns out that working class men don't like genderless haircuts. They're scared of that word. You wouldn't like it either. The others would laugh at you. A bit of experimenting every now and then isn't bad. I guess it just wasn't the time yet. It wasn't merely a gym, it was Artemitep's boxing club. A community project created to steer at-risk away from drugs and crime. 
a kind man from Zemsk. I heard he had some trouble with the law when he was younger, and that's why he wanted to start the gym as his way of giving back. Hmm, Kuno. Who's Kuno? Oh yes, you mean the kid with the sailor's mouth? Yes, I've heard him yelling profanities in the backyard. I think it would take more than a gym to help that kid. It didn't. If anything, it made the youth situation in Martinez even worse. At some point, someone started a rumor that the punching bag downstairs was full of amphetamines. You should have known it. It's not really full of that. No one would store their drugs like that. Eventually, the coalition took away the funding and the club went bankrupt. This was a few years ago. It's gotten much more peaceful around the plaza ever since. Oh, this one's a mess. <sighs> there used to be a company that promised to repair windows 24 hours a day. What could go wrong with this one, right? Turns out, the business was actually set up as a front for an illicit group that was producing snuff milieus. Who would have guessed? Hmm, what's a snuff milieu? And they never cleaned up the debris either. Now it's just littering the hallway and I have no idea how to get rid of it on my own. It's a Sub Rosa radio station that broadcasts real murders with real victims. Some people pay good money to get off on it. What does she mean, to get off on it? Don't worry, the ICP has a separate division that deals exclusively with unlicensed Sub Rosas. This isn't our problem. Good luck with that. It's not easy catching those perpetrators. You mean Mr. Fabron? The taxidermist. No, he mostly just did drugs. But what drugs exactly? He got high on some weird taxidermy chemicals. I wouldn't recommend it to anyone. Eventually, they caused him to lose control of his bladder. The smell was awful. Even you can probably do better than that. There used to be a fashion atelier here but I have forgotten the head designer's name. They were doing well for a couple of years, until the insect rights activists came. Mm-hmm. The atelier produced a certain collection that used chitin among the materials. Apparently chitin is made in the Occident, where it's extracted from beetle wings. And you know how all kinds of political movements are big in the Occident. The activists shut down the biggest chitin supplier, which of course caused the price to skyrocket. And, naturally, all the most fashionable tastemakers refused to be seen in chitin from then on. The atelier went bankrupt before they could finish the collection. Hmm, really? Anyway... They were made by a company called Slipstream. After they pivoted from making rotor blades to skis, their chef executive took off on a vacation with all their money. Honestly, I think it's quite funny. I think he's still sending out holiday transmissions from Tulula or Tiumotiri or Hashkor or wherever he is. The usual, I imagine that he's been thinking up all kinds of new business plans and can't wait to get started on them just as soon as he returns. Men like that are a curse. Sure, but Slipstream is history now. All their remaining assets got seized by the bailiffs in 47. I have no idea why those skis and blades are still lying around in the house. Not much use now, I guess. They were just props. Why return them? Maybe you could make a sword out of one. No, wait, forget it. It would take too long. Fortress Accident, the radio game studio. 
they were an interesting bunch. We talked about role-playing systems every now and then. Once, I even saw two of them get into fisticuffs over Wiro. They certainly took their work very seriously, even if they seemed to be chronically liberal with their schedules. The usual, they ran out of money and couldn't get the project done on time. Well, I did hear them talking at times. They seemed to believe they were historical individuals on some grand quest. Yes, but when the money started to run out, they just began to complain a lot about capitalism. You know, how the markets are rigged to keep out new businesses and so on. In the end, they just didn't get it done. They didn't have enough willpower to produce something truly historic and to show up to work on time. Showing up to work on time is hard. No, scratch that. Showing up to work at all is difficult, especially if you've been drinking. Not the wisest decision. You would have lost all your savings. The result is one on a 20-sided die. The dice is black and filled with little silvery flakes like snowfall. Anything else? Oh boy, the fabled Revo Show ICT. You're in for a treat here. The place was owned by two guys who had some rather innovative ideas about marketing. The bear was one of them. Now ask me about their other ideas. Indeed, what were the other ideas? There was really just one and it involved picking out the prettiest girls in the neighborhood and paying them 20 cents per hour to man the booth. And by man the booth, I mean slump behind the counter with a face that could maim you if you ever dared to disturb their bored magazine browsing. Oh, but they did. They did show up to work and not alone. There were also acne-ridden girlfriends and gorilla-like boyfriends loitering near the ice cream stand. And they already had the bear. The bear. Of course not. The bear was terrifying. No one wants ice cream guarded by a hostile apex predator. To make matters worse, the fridge didn't work too well either and half the ice cream came out malformed and partially melted. Eventually, Ravishow Ice City lost the price war to its rival, Glass A 5000. Glass A 5000 sold caramel sundaes for only 5 cents apiece, out of regular fridges. Maybe, because the taxidermist who made that bear definitely wasn't doing his best, I mean. He said that the bear was his vision beast. He said he met his vision beast while high on desiccants. Called it Megatherian. Sounds cool. Megatherian. A mega wild beast. It's an imaginary beast that guides you through life. By telling you to do more drugs, mostly. Maybe this wise and noble beast can guide you toward those Amphetamines you've been craving. The horrific necktie tightens around your neck, strangely excited. But it doesn't feel particularly fun this time around. Do you? Well, good luck keeping it under control. Anyway, now you know the story of the fallen ice cream empire. Little sparkling embers under the window. Outside it's light. Light scatters from the low-hanging cloud cover. There's always the threat of snow. Anything else? Another failed business, perhaps? I've been here for a long time. Good. I hope it clarified things a bit. What else? I'm listening. 
good. I hope it clarified things a bit. What else? A gust of cold air sweeps through the chimney. The stones and minerals on the shelves rattle as though agitated. For a moment, it almost feels as though you're outside the building, exposed to the atmosphere. Didn't we already talk about this? What are you talking about? My address is exactly the same. Rue de Sanguelan 10. No, the old coal plant that used to be here was subsumed into the new venture. Its ruins swallowed up, yet it has a different address in the heart of the city. This doesn't make any sense. Are you saying my business was spared because of a technicality? Where is this coming from? And what? Does it mean that I'm safe from failure? Don't let her become complacent. She still needs to ward her soul against the evil forces. <laughs> Do you know what this is? It's a morning ring. I made this when my first company failed. It was a small jewelry shop right here in the East Delta Commerce Center, built with the little I inherited from my parents. I drove it into the ground within a year. I didn't have what you would call a viable business plan. It wasn't just the jewelry shop either. I always thought that it was just the world that you were supposed to try again and again until you finally succeed. And now you're telling me what? That it was all because I didn't run my little shops and ventures from a dump inside an abandoned chimney? Yeah. Or maybe it's the entire world that's cursed. It's such a precarious place. Nothing ever works out the way you want it. That's why people like role-playing games. You can be whoever you want to be, you can try again. Still, there is something inherently violent even about dice rolls. It's like every time you cast a die, something disappears. Some alternative ending or an entirely different world. But anyway, thanks for sharing your theories, officer. Of course. Tell me what you have in mind. How about an amber dye? <laughs> Who told you amber was cheap? It's beautiful, really and has been treasured since the ancient times. For seven rao, I'll craft you a 13-sided die from a piece of amber with a fossilized insect. It's perfect for those who can't seem to let go of their past. I had a feeling. Great, see you in eight hours then. Was there anything else? Looks like someone tried to reconceptualize their business here. Look, the skis and rotor blades both bear the same Slipstream logo. It seems likely that they started out making one, failed to turn a profit, and then pivoted to producing the other. That's a good question. Reality is ruthless. <laughs>